All right, everybody, welcome back to We Play Games. I'm Walker, and here we are in Age of Wonders 4 about to do our tier two tome tier list. Now, I do apologize, there's a thunderstorm going on in the back. I'll try to edit that out as much as possible, but I, I figure that this is an important video for us to do, especially because some of these tomes are busted beyond all belief. Now, in our tier one tome tier list, I thought that there were some that were a lot stronger than the other ones, but then there were a lot of them that I think are generally playable. Just kind of depends on how you're trying to use them and, and the ways you're gonna play around with them, but that's not the case in our tier two tomes. Um, our grading scale is going to reflect that as a result. The S to tier tomes are going to be the tomes that are broken, the ones that really do need to be addressed in some meaningful way. Now I've heard some rumors that these are going to get nerfed and so hopefully they are getting nerfed in the uh, the upcoming patch or shifted around to different tiers. But these ones are so much better than all of the rest that our A tier tomes are going to be entirely empty. We're just not going to use the slot so that way it's highlighted that the S tier tomes really are that much better. Uh, and the B tier tomes are going to be pretty limited. Again, just so that way it's it's very, very clear where the power is on these tomes. This is probably going to be the only tier that is going to have this issue. There, there are definitely some tomes that are stronger than others and all the other uh, tiers, but the tier two tomes are wildly imbalanced when it comes to the way they play out. All right, so our first tome here, the Tome of Scrying, is kind of a victim of circumstance. So most recently they did a giant nerf to ranged units because people were abusing the tactical AI and killing it with a bunch of very low low tier ranged units but that was more of a reflection on how bad the tactical AI was rather than a reflection on how good ranged units are. Ranged units in PvP are a mixed bag. They're mostly not good because they're very squishy and your opponent is probably just going to have a bunch of very strong heroes with blink and killing momentum and then bringing ranged units is kind of like a risk proposition. If they can just blink back there, kill your dude and then killing momentum, kill another dude then you're just starting at like negative 10 or 15 morale with uh, a bunch of guys laying dead on the battlefield and that's the way it works if you have way too much uh, eggs in your basket on the range side even if you don't do that even if you have like a, a reasonable front line guess what blink like the range units just do not function well in a universe with heroes and, and killing momentum and that is the universe that age of wonders find itself in so Thomas crying it specializes in ranged units and it does that specialization very well but it's a bad unit type and as a result this this grade is gonna have to reflect that. Now guided projectiles, if they ever go back and buff ranged units, is going to be a, a highlight for Thomas Crying and a reason to rank it a little higher, because this is actually a really big upgrade to the offensive capability of your ranged units. This means that you get to ignore the obscured effect, which means you can fire through walls, you can fire into melee really, really effectively. And this does, of course, work pretty well with skirmisher units as, as well, not just the battle mage uh, support and ranged units here. And you do get access to a hero skill, although this is something that you're probably not going to need on most of your heroes. And then you do get access to the Summon Watcher. I, I like the Watcher. It's a tier 3 summonable, and that means you can start cranking these out as soon as you pick up the Tome of Scrying. These things do a, a lot of damage. 12 lightning damage is no joke, especially if you're fighting someone with lightning weakness, like somebody who has a bunch of iron golems. But even if they don't, Psychic Gaze is 36, so it's the same amount of damage here, but it's on a one turn cooldown, so that means you can't do it every single turn, but hey, whatever, it's the same amount of damage of as taking a, a triple shot basically and critically this gets a 60% chance of stunning gives two mark you can't miss with it it's at six range you have ethereal therefore you're immune to a whole lot of different statuses scrying eye means you're immune to flanking charge resistance watcher is just like a great unit this is a really really great unit that drops off very quickly in the uh, the universe that age of wonders 4 finds itself in but for a brief period of time I think watchers actually do really shine if, if you get them early enough. The problem is that if you're taking this tome, then like obviously you're not taking a different tier two tome, and this is not one of the, the powerhouse tomes, and uh, the problems outside of just the Watcher means that I this tome is just not good. Tower of True Sight, that you're never building this. All of your cities and outposts naturally have a, a small level of True Sight anyway, and like well, you're not gonna you're not gonna build this. This is this is a nonsense thing. Don't research this. Don't research this either. This is cute. It means that if you like curse your enemy's army and they split the stack up, you get a ton of extra vision. And 15 turns is basically forever when it comes to PvP, but it doesn't do anything. It just gives you vision inside your opponent's uh, areas. So like, uh, that's a pretty limited ability when it comes to just brawling. And that's the way that, that PvP generally comes down to. And you're not gonna cast Mental Mark either. Like, yes, this does exploit AoE, but it doesn't reduce the damage output of the AoE by either killing unit models 
or by just you know reducing their literal literal damage output by weakening them or whatever so like uh this this whole tome just doesn't work and it's not thomas crying's fault if they hadn't nerfed ranged units into being basically non-viable outside of a, a couple of them then i think this could be a little better but it's it's it really is just like the summon watcher ability and, and basically nothing else right now and as a consequence i do think this has to be a d tier on the other side of things we have the tome of amplification this is one of the broken tomes that i really hope the uh, the rumor that i've heard that it's moving to tier three is true because this one's stupid and i i say that as someone who has to take this all the time in in pvp it's very very good but it's very dumb uh so tome of amplification why is this dumb you get access to amplified minds this means you get basically a free academy in every single city now that doesn't mean that like you have an infinite amount of knowledge for the remainder of the game because ultimately you're going to end up getting a lot of extra knowledge from ancient wonders and research posts on the board from your outposts and stuff like that and so you know 20 extra knowledge income doesn't mean as much when you have like a thousand knowledge income or whatever but that this is a tier two tome you get this crazy early you can get this when you only have like two or three hundred knowledge on the board in like four or five cities and then that's a gigantic increase in terms of your knowledge uh in terms of speed and that of course means that you're going to get more casting points because you get casting points for every every tome that you unlock and this thing just chews you through those tomes that much faster and boy uh the rest of the tome is pretty good too you get access to an spi that gets you world map casting points generally world map casting points are pretty tough to get uh and so getting extra on an SPI that you can build in every single city is a huge deal. You get spell amplification, which is varying in terms of its value. It depends on if you're banning some of the good damage spells. But like if you're not banning tectonic shatter and you're and you have spell amplification on the field, you're just gonna kill entire armies before they get the opportunity to respond. And even even before you get access to tectonic shatter, this can be a pretty meaningful increase to your damage output just by by increasing the, the value of things like hey, chain lightning, that's in this uh tome too. And this of course this is not like a tactical spell that the AI is going to use a lot in auto resolve but now that we're out of the tier one tomes don't stop thinking about tactical spells as being necessarily a downside because the the tactical spells get very very good as soon as you get into manual combats and they, they'll probably be really good once the AI understands how to use them in, in auto resolves themselves and this thing's this thing's really gross like obviously it would be nice if it had a status effect that it could apply but the fact of the matter is that the the things you really want to exploit lightning damage against especially like iron golems and the like are immune to all the statuses anyway and so the fact that this has no uh, status effect is not that big a deal and if you're fighting against units that have multiple unit models then just doing a bunch of damage to them is functionally like weakening them oh and of course you get a minor race transformation that gives you kind of 30 percent crit chance all the time because you and your opponent are both going to be casting spells at like a breakneck pace therefore you're just going to be critting way more often with all of your racial units and of course your racial heroes and this is a, a really nice buff there the uh, enchantments are all right. The enchantments ultimately do focus on ranged units, which as we discussed in, in the Toma Scrying, I don't think are as good. But Amplified Arrows in particular with like uh, Snow Spirits is ridiculous because the way that like ranged attacks on Skirmisher units work, this does actually amplify that ranged attack. So you can freeze two units with a, a Snow Spirit by just bouncing the, uh, the ranged attack around. And that's pretty darn solid. And even if you don't, you can use the alt trick where you just hold down alt, shoot the ground, and then it'll jump off of the ground onto a different unit to get you a little extra range in like a, an artillery duel if somehow you end up in that situation frenzying focus is okay but generally speaking you're not gonna have like tons of battle mage units but if you get a uh like a swamp troll early on because you find the friend of ogres in, in your heroes then this is ridiculous a swamp troll with frenzying focus just cranks out damage like the biggest downside for the tome of amplification is that it has six spells therefore you're not going to be guaranteed to find something um specifically amplified minds as early you might have to shuffle your your uh spells a couple of times to pick this up as quickly as possible and contra amplification pylons terrible this is an awful spell don't don't ever research this because just like look at the math all right so if you cast contra amplification pylon this takes one turn to cast so against someone who's ta casting just a tactical spell you're at zero damage versus hundred percent then on the second turn you cast your first tactical spell you're at 150 percent but they cast it again they're at 200 then they cast it on the third turn 
they're at 300, now you're at 300. Then it's not until the fourth turn where you get to actually surpass the damage and that this has to be alive the entire time. This is this is not a good spell. Don't cast this spell in PvP. Don't even research this spell in PvP. You'll be happier for it. But like it doesn't matter because the rest of the spells, the rest of this tome is just so good that it's dumb. I the rumor I've, I've heard that this is going to tier three I think makes sense because in once you're at tier three tomes then like the extra knowledge for amplified minds isn't as big a deal because hopefully you have a bigger empire with more knowledge income elsewhere. But th this this tome you kind of have to take as your first tier two tome for almost everybody. The real pros are probably able to take the other S tier tome first and still do well, but you, you just take this as your first one and you'll be happy. All right, so up next we have the Tome of Glades. Now the Tome of Glades is a nature affinity tome. Generally, I'm not like a huge fan of going big nature just cause like most of the time Awaken Instincts is banned and outside of that, there's not like a whole lot to, to draw my attention in. But Tome of Glades itself uh, has a lot of tools that I think make it playable. So you get Leaf Skin, which gives you extra resistance on all of your racial heroes and your racial units. You're probably not going to have a ton of racial units, but you might pick up a couple in your tomes and you might still have some that are playable as, as tier three units. And getting extra resistance on your heroes is actually a really big deal because magical damage is going to start picking up as the game goes on. There's just no way around it. Like people are going to find good items for their heroes or they're going to find good spells or whatever. And then resistance really starts to outstrip uh, defense as the game goes on. And this is a permanent bonus on all of those. And that, that's a really nice thing all on its own. You also get Forest Warden with the Create Forest Overlap. Now, generally, I'm not a huge fan of support abilities that are narrow, but this one is narrow and controllable. If you position yourself well, you can do some really sick ambushing, especially if we're playing on low light the way that we are playing right now. I, I really love playing on low light. I think it's a lot of fun. And the ability to create forests in friendly or unknown provinces, plus Leaf Skin's Camouflage and the Forest Warden, you know, just across the board, nice damage buff means that you actually can do some real good fighting in the forests if you're careful about it. If you're not careful about it and you're not interested in that, there's still other tools here in Tome of Blades that are nice. Aspect of the Root plays really well with Keeper's Mark or Steadfast abilities, but even without those, you still get access to a gigantic amount of healing for your front line. And if you're doing it on units that are relatively low model count, like the Entwined Protector or whatever, uh, or Bastions, then you can get some real good value out of, out of your healing. Just keep your sustain on your front line alive, make it so that way you don't have to support them, they support themselves, which frees up your uh, your real damage de dealing units, your heroes, to just do what they do and kill stuff. And the Entwine Protector, as we talked about during the Tome of Roots uh, part of our last video, I think is actually really good. Seven defense, three resistance. It is a plant, so this means, you know, you, you have a fire weakness, but you do get a lightning resistance, which is pretty good because the Tome of Amplification is there just sneering over the world. Uh, and these guys really do keep things alive. 20 hit points on all friendly adjacent units means you can just move an Entwine Protector, get some guys near him, pop off the entwine protector move your units away and then you've gotten you know maybe 40 or 60 hit points on one action from a, a frontline guy that's that's a pretty nice com combination of things there and you also have probably the only playable ranged unit in the game here in in the glade runner there are some people who would debate whether or not the glade runner is it's itself playable but i i think if you're you know leaning into its strengths optional cavalry giving these guys the uh, extra hit points and extra movement points by giving them cav then the Blade Runners, I think, are, are actually usable because they have a 90 base hit points. So if you give them five more or 10 more through the bears, then Glade Runners can, can stick around a little better than some of the other ranged units that are, are found in the game. And they do a lot of damage. Uh, this is this is a pretty big damage output and the, the tracker's mark ability stacks really well, right? You can only have three stacks of fortune and five stacks of, of strengthened per unit. Like that's just where it caps out. So if you want to do even more damage to enemy heroes, or whatever, then you're going to need to come up with Sundered Defense. And this is Sundered Defense at 5 range for free. So the Tracker's Mark uh, plus the damage output for Glade Runners and critically their ability to be optional cav and therefore a little more stable than this would present means that I think the overall package for the uh, the Tome of Glades is actually pretty good. Now, I don't want to go out on a limb. I don't think that these are, are A tier. I think even if the S tier Tomes were, were banned, then this would probably still be 
somewhere in the top of B tier. But this is this is not a, a shameful display of a, a tome. I think you should be pretty happy taking Tome of Glades, assuming that that these guys are not here to threaten them. All right, so up next we have the Tome of Fertility. Now the Tome of Fertility is in a weird space because it kind of only has one spell, but you know, it's a really good one and we'll talk about why it's really good in just a second. But like Temple of Fertility, you're just not gonna have a ton of population in your cities and city structures that don't really help you on knowledge or production or you know, useful incomes are not worth building. This is mostly blank. This is mostly blank. I've seen Animate Flora do some stuff in combat, but like ultimately Floral Stingers are, are not the sort of thing that you want to be dedicating your casting slots to. Rather, you should be casting, you know, more impactful spells, like either becoming Im immune to all damage types or killing your opponents. Those, that's generally what you want to do with your spells. But you know, the Nymph themselves are fantastic. The, and unlike, I think, the Thomas Crying, where like the Watcher is pretty good. I think the Nymph is one of the best support units in the game. It's just that ultimately there are better or almost as good support units on other tier two tomes that are, are themselves a lot more useful. But summon Nymphs are great just because of their, their dual utility here. You get access to Seduce, which obviously at 60% chance isn't that reliable, but if you do the, the work and you actually reduce people's status resistance through, you know, flash freezing or blizzard or whatever, you have, you have a reasonable shot of getting this up to 75 or 80 percent and i've played enough battle tech to know that that doesn't hit every single time but it hits more often than you'd think and seducing an enemy is a huge deal in terms of combat right if you take control of an enemy uh you've not only reduced their army count by one you've increased your army count by one and maybe now all of a sudden you have some really nice flank attacks or whatever and at six range this means that the nymphs can do this without necessarily getting crunked in in return and with two defense four resistance resistance and 80 hit points and of course being fey they have spirit resistance nymphs are reasonably burly like these things are not going to die as fast as some of the other things that can do mind control effects and you get access to revitalize this is this is i think the real highlight for nymphs is that this is an aoe status clear generally that's almost impossible to get access to without getting access to fairies and so this is a huge huge deal i think that in terms of like one spell tomes uh nymphs are are fantastic they are ultimately like the only thing you should be excited about in the tome of fertility and that is going to have to be reflected in their grade but i do want to also highlight that in the future it looks like the way mind controlling works it, after a combat is going to get a little better and that means that the the tome of fertility itself might get a little better just just be aware that you're really only taking this for summon nymphs fortunately there's only five spells here so you don't have to shuffle that much the hero ability is mostly nonsense most of your heroes are just going to kill stuff but if they do something to reduce the damage output for heroes then i think revitalize actually could get pretty good because again this is a just an aoe status clear anytime you get an aoe status clear that that is a big deal i i think it's a one spell tome that's meaningfully better than tome of scrying uh because i do think that nymphs unlike the watchers actually do scale pretty well into the mid game because if you're removing a stun on a hero then you're not actually bringing like an action for the the nymph itself the same way you're taking an action on the watcher rather you're just taking the, the action on whatever unit that was stunned and it's not hard to find a, a stunned unit that's higher value than the support unit there and because it's tier three like these things are going to stick around a little bit so yeah i think a c tier here for tome of fertility makes sense all right, so up next we have the Tome of the Doom Herald. Now the Tome of the Doom Herald is kind of weird because it is sort of also a one spell tome, but it's a one spell tome with a slightly better SPI than what we saw in the uh, the Tome of the Nymph over there. So let's let's just talk through these spells. First, Prelude of Doom. I've cast the spell before. Please don't do it. It's not good. Three demoralized uh, is not enough uh, when it comes to casting a strategic spell. This doesn't even really help you with creeping, unfortunately. And the uh, Summon Banshee is also not that much better. Now I do like the Phase Whale of Banshee effect if you're trying to just spread a bunch of weakened into your army on the other side, but like if you're doing that, then your Banshee is going to die. Uh, and that's going to be bad for your morale. So generally, if you're trying to, you know, use Banshees well, then you should take the summon undead uh, signature skill and just hope you roll Banshees. That's that's a lot less risky than trying to summon Banshees of your own. Cruel Weaponry is okay. I, like these ultimately, I think, are mostly win wars, but it's not, it's not impossible to get your opponent's army down to low. And then, 
you know, 30% extra damage can be pretty nice, but you do get, I think most importantly, access to the Joy Siphoners ability. Now, first, Joy Siphoners does not work very well with Undead. So if you're taking Dome, Tome of the Doom Herald, then you're probably not playing around with Whiteborn. That's not the end of the world, right? You can, you can take this and then just nothing else in Shadow and feel pretty good about yourself based off of Joy Siphoners and Do Doom Death Trench alone. Uh, but Joy Siphoners does play well in a, a fearsome combat because of the way morale works. Not only is this going to deal extra morale damage to your opponents by just inflicting a little bit of extra morale penalties, but it's also going to buff your own morale. And that critically means that not only will your heroes stick around a little better because they're able to siphon off uh, morale, but your army might too. So this is a, a really big deal when it comes to keeping your morale up. It's not as good as some of the other things when it comes to keeping your morale up, and that does need to be reflected. And ultimately, I do think a lot of the other stuff here in this in this tome is just not particularly strong. But because being evil is A, pretty good, and B, very fast, I don't think it's hard to get really good value out of the Doom Death Trench. And I, I think that as a consequence, this is probably a C tier. And I do think it's marginally better than the, uh, the Tome of Fertility, just based off of the power of its SPI alone. All right, so up next, we have one of my personal favorites, the, uh, the Tome of Necromancy. The Tome of Necromancy is, I think, just really cool because I think undead are just really cool and, and I'm, I'm not going to, I'm going to die on that hill. Um, but broadly speaking, I think the Tome of Souls is just like not particularly good because you don't get access to a, a, an evolutionary summon or anything like that. No SPI. But the Tome of Necromancy, I think, fixes a lot of those problems. You get a research post SPI. Now, yes, this does not give you any extra knowledge on the front side, but I don't think that matters that much because like ultimately you're going to try to get Scholar's Guilds everywhere. Scholar's Guilds require two research posts. You, you should not found a city that can't build a, an academy, I think pretty generally, um, and so you're guaranteed to get the, the first research post pretty much always, but sometimes you just see like a Bronze Ancient Wonder at the beginning of the game, and you're like, all right, this needs to be a city, but there's no second research post to be found, and then an SPI that can get you that, that Scholar's Guild is actually really good, and of course they scale pretty well if you have a longer game like we're having now with uh, Winslea and, and all those guys. We have like three or four research post SPIs, so all of our Scholar's Guilds are, are doing like real overtime work there. And, and really helping out our, our knowledge economy. And the, the rest of the package here for Tome of Necromancy I think is quite nice. You get access to a heal. Generally, I think damage spells on the strategic layer are better than heals, but the heals are pretty rare. Like, you technically could take Tome of Faith in order to get an army heal, but like, Tome of Faith is mostly not good, whereas I think Tome of Necromancy is mostly good, and this is a very inexpensive spell. Like, all you really need is souls, and then most of the rest of this economy will work on its own. And you just get that by playing the game naturally, kill stuff, and then you'll get plenty of souls. Yes, you can build soul wells, but you're going to kill things for your souls most of the time, and, and that's going to play out pretty well. And it's going to play out pretty well because it does get you access to some neat stuff. Uh, corrupt souls are a very strange unit. So if we pop over here and we look at the corrupt souls themselves, yes, they are ethereal, therefore they get a little bit of spirit resistance, but they're also shadow and therefore have less spirit resistance and they're undead and so have even less spirit resistance. And so the corrupt souls themselves aren't actually like extra resilient because of the double typing here they're extra weak but they also have just immunity to a colossal amount of different effects and because of the pass through ability and the low maintenance and the fact that these are really inexpensive to spam you can create a big 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 army of corrupt souls pretty quickly with the tome of necromancy if you are so inspired and even if you're not so inspired that's okay because the other stuff here is great necromancers are great necromancers can do strength and undead. This is hastened. You can do this on a hero. You can do this on a war breed. You can do this on whatever you want to as long as it's undead and then it's fast. You ever seen a war breed with 48 speed? It's scary. Generally you want to get there with scalds, but if you're doing crazy weird stuff and you want to be undead, then like, you know, necromancers, they they these things actually play really well. You just need to give them good units to, to strengthen and then they're really strong. Because the raise undead is nonsense. This is this is crazy. Especially because of the Tome of Oblivion. Now, we are banning uh, Sleep of Oblivion corpse con uh, consumption in our, our most recent playthrough because I killed a bunch of people with it, but I, I think that's probably supposed to be part of the game. Triumph at me if, I, if I'm wrong. Uh, like, this is, a, this is a shadow tome. It kills stuff. All the shadow stuff interacts with corpses. I think that, that overlap and synergy is, is supposed to be part of the game, but uh, if you think it's too strong, that's okay. I, I just think that, bro broadly speaking, because there's a bunch of stuff in here that 
that, that interacts with it, that it's an intentional interaction. And even if it's not, Raise Undead is fantastic against Phoenixes and is fantastic against you know, Phoenix Anks and the like. Raise Zombies is pretty marginal. You're, you're probably not going to do this. You want this effect, just take Dark Ritual. But these are really cool support units. And Necrotic Magic is, I think, pretty good. This is a unit enchantment that does apply to Battle Mage units and support units. Now, broadly speaking, Battle Mages are not great, but there are a couple that I think are, are reasonable. And of course, you kind of can't get around bringing support units to fights because you, you do need them in order to make sure that your big units actually stay alive. And Decaying is a nice ability. The ability to prevent people from regaining hit points is huge if you uh, line it up pretty well. Now, of course, it is countered and counters by regeneration, and regeneration is a lot more prevalent than uh, Decaying. And so broadly speaking, if people really want to chew through your Decaying by, by getting a whole lot of regeneration, they will. But if they don't prepare for that, then Decaying can mess people up pretty badly. I think overall, before I started talking about stuff, I was inclined to give this a, an A tier just because I do think that it plays pretty well. And I think that if you're thinking about the great transformation, then you kind of have to take the Tome of Necromancy. But the fact of the matter is that like Whiteborn and, and stuff does not play well with one of the other S tier tomes. And I think that does need to be reflected in the, the grades here. But if the S tiers get the nerfed or, or banned, then I think this is an A tier. Just just be aware that it is contextual. It depends on, on what your rule set is for your group low a or high b for necromancy i think makes sense it just plays well it does it does exactly what it says on the front lets you be an undead warlord no problem all right this uh this video is long enough so we're just going to speed run some of the really bad tomes here and we're going to kick it off with the tome of the beacon so the tome of the beacon first of course is order affinity outside of the awaken instincts angel eyes combo order affinity isn't great and unfortunately both of the tier two tomes for order affinity are just like hot garbage uh tome of the beacon Mighty Meek, this does nothing because, again, like tier one units, not good. Do not bring these. This enchantment is bad. This is a very bad summon. It has 60 hit points. I like it. I like, I do like the Lightbringer. I love the ability to mind control people. And with the uh, the war things, like the way war prisoners work, you know, it might get slightly better. But 60 hit points means that this thing just dies. You you bring a Lightbringer and you're like, I'm going to mind control, control something. And then it's dead. And then you're like, oh, right. That's why. 60 hit points. Nothing. Uh, Covenant of the Faith used to make Tome of the Beacon like marginally playable because it used to give you access to Imperium. But it doesn't anymore. And this is nonsense. And this is nonsense. This is like almost not nonsense because you can get angel eyes and then get, you know, 20 morale on all of your units. And that can be pretty nice because then you can just like ignore morale problems pretty quickly. But like this, this, this is a terrible tone. Don't ever take Tome of the Beacon. This is easy D tier. I think, frankly, if there was an F tier, this would be an F tier. So up next we have the Tome of the Inquisition. This one is marginally more playable than the Tome of the Beacon because like what it's trying to do here, which I think is mostly just casting Burden of Guilt is actually pretty good. This is a good spell. Burden of Guilt loses 50% of the move points on the on the world map and Spirit Damage, because Spirit Damage is a great damage type, is actually a really good spell. But uh, the rest of this Tome is not good. Um, Inquisitors are way too squishy. I don't know why these guys have so few hit points, but they mostly just die. It's unfortunate it because I like skirmishers and the the ability here looks pretty cool but like these things fold like origami paper it's crazy how fast people can mulch through inquisitors and the rest of this tome is not great condemnation on a mass area is okay I guess but like you'd rather be condemning people with strategic spells which fortunately order can do later but they can't do it here um, and inquisitors mark at 30% base chance is incredibly incredibly low at least it's a unit enchantment and so like you don't have to do a whole lot in order to make sure that this happens but it's only on skirmishers and ranged and like i we've talked about why i don't really like those unit types like, skirmishers are a little better but not this one like like snow spirits snow spirits and and uh slithers and stuff those those ones are pretty good and at least this works there because it's not a racial transformation uh tithe collector is cute i guess but like most of this tome is not great. Like, honestly, this is really just tome of burden of guilt. Plus you get access to zeal for your, your heroes, which is not on the tome of zeal for some reason, because I guess they get condemned instead. But like overall, the tome of inquisition is, is only barely technically playable. And as a consequence, I think this is probably a D tier above tome of beacon, which again, this is an F tier tome, but not the sort of thing you're looking to, to rock in age of wonders for multiplayer. All right. So that brings us to our next broken tome 
home, the Tome of Revelry, finally some good chaos tomes, or at least one good chaos tome. The Tome of Revelry is absolutely ludicrous though. You get access to the Revels of Carnage. Now hopefully this gets nerfed. I did notice that they nerf uh, Adaptable in the upcoming patch to no longer apply to heroes. If this no longer applies to heroes, that would hurt Tome of Revelry, but like it wouldn't hurt it enough to, to really, really dislodge this as being an incredibly powerful tome. Because you get access to Scalds, who are one of the best support units in the game. They're very burly, they have tons of hit points, they have two AoE abilities, including an AoE Haste and an AoE Two Strengthen, Two Fortune, and of course you have access to an Insanity ability out of the Scald, so even the Scald itself is actually a reasonable combat unit. But the support abilities here being AoE is just insane, because you can you can hasten like a whole bunch of Warbreeds and a whole bunch of heroes, and then just crush them with great weapons, and it doesn't even matter that you can't ride horses, because everybody's, everybody's hastened, everyone's running around the board slaughtering stuff, and oh yeah, right, two AoE abilities, so uh, Tome of Warding plays really well with Tome of Revelry, and I think Tome of Warding is really, really good. And then of course the rest of the stuff here creates a package whereby you can kind of ignore morale. You're not ignoring morale literally the same way that like the undead are, you're ignoring it positively, because you're getting extra morale for killing stuff, you're also getting 50% extra morale from all sources with this Reveler's Heart ability. So what this all means is that the Tome of Revelry can actually like endure losses in combat, whereas a lot of the other tomes can't, and the way that combat is going to move, especially once you get into the tier 2, 3, 4, 5 tomes, people are just going to kill units really, really fast, and that's going to cause a lot of problems for morale if you're not ready for it. Morale means nothing to Tome of Revelry. These people are insane. Like you kill half of their friends and they're still at, at neutral morale at worst. And so you're just not going to route people with the, the Tome of Revelry on board. And they're just going to be slaughtering your armies like wholesale with their skulls and their blood fury weapons. Like I guess the one downside to them is that this is physical damage, which is like not that big a deal, but it, it doesn't matter. This tome is busted. This tome is ridiculous. I think that probably it's an S tier tome a little weaker than the Tome of amplification, but I, I imagine there are probably some people who are very, very good at multiplayer, like a lot better than me, who probably take uh, Revelry first, but it's, I mean, it, it really just depends on what your rules are in regards to your heroes, but this is an easy S tier. Actually, do feel bad about taking this. Take, feel bad about taking either of these. These are really stupid tomes. Don't play with them. Play with them, kill your friends, and then don't play with them ever again. All right, so now we are back to our speed running bad tomes with the uh, Tome of Mayhem. There's really not a lot here to talk about. Like the Mark of Misfortune is kind of cute because this does allow you to get base attacks of with Misfortune on your heroes and therefore pump out their ability to reduce damage output from your opponent's army. But the easiest way to use a hero to reduce the damage output of your opponent's army is to kill units and this doesn't really help there. Same with like a lot of the Misfortune effects. Misfortune is rare and therefore, you know, it makes fortune like a little better and all of these misfortune effects do combine in a way where you might be able to prevent your opponent from stacking fortune a lot, but it's very, very trivial to get a bunch of fortune and therefore like you're probably not going to ever be able to get somebody into misfortune range where they're going to start getting fumbles. Uh, the infectious insanity is, I guess, cute, but the 50% chance is not enough and it's only for one turn. So confusion is a siege project that doesn't really expedite siege summon gremlin these things just die 55 hit points one defense one resistance is not enough yes they have displacement effects and that's kind of cute but like uh, you just hit this thing once with a high level hero and then it'll die and then the displacement won't matter get behind you is cool because this lets you you know flip units around and then and then flank them very effectively but like you, you're not gonna bring a, a unit that's just gonna die in one hit to a, uh, a high level hero fight at least I, I hope you're not going to and the unfortunately the enchantments are just like this is this is this is an all nonsense tome and there's not even a, like a nice economic SPI for the uh, tome of mayhem to rest its laurels on I I I I'm not ashamed to give this thing a D tier. Now, it is a D tier, unlike the Tome of Beacon, which is an easy F. Uh, it is technically playable, but I'm not even sure if it's better than the Tome of Inquisition, because at least this thing gets access to a really powerful strategic spell. And there's like, aside from the hero ability, basically nothing that I'm excited about when it comes to the Tome of Mayhem. So yeah, that's a that's a D tier right there. All right, so that leaves us with our Materium Tomes, starting off with the Tome of Winds. The Tome of Winds is very problematic, because it does have a spell that is only good if 
you have a bunch of water, water is generally not played in multiplayer because the water layer isn't really finished. We'll see if this changes around as the, the game uh, evolves and they add more stuff to the water layer, but like this is kind of nonsense. This is definitely nonsense. Scout units you're probably not going to have much of, if any of, by the time you get to these tier 2 units. Even if you're playing around with like Industrious, this is probably not worth researching. Uh, this is mostly not good. This is mostly not good, although at least it's in a 2 hex radius and blind is is a reasonable thing when it comes to uh, inflicting statuses but at, because it's a percent based effect this means it's probably not going to be affecting a lot of those high level heroes that are running around because they're going to have a lot of resistance and uh zephyr archers although these are really good in single player are very bad in multiplayer because people are just going to move their units away from each other like you're not going to be able to zephyr shot a whole bunch of guys against a, a, a human who knows what's going on and this effect is ultimately like a lot worse than what you see on the the glade runner ability with the uh the marked shot and critically these things cannot be um mounted zephyr archers do not have that that cavalry option ability which means that they can't have more hit points they can't have more movement makes it harder for them to get two shots off if you're looking to do that and uh the rest of this tome just doesn't pick it up this is this is the most disappointing thing for me at least the summon wind rager this thing doesn't evolve like if the wind rager evolved into a tier four unit then i could even make an argument for this being maybe a c tier because like then it could be nice because i i do think that there is a space for something like this i would love to see a gin with a, a pole arm and a wind barrier effect i know that some people disagree because they they think that archers should be a better counter to pull arms but like eh, whatever gins are cool but this thing this thing is not cool this thing doesn't do anything and that's kind of like the story whenever it comes to the uh, the tome of the winds is that ultimately like the best thing about this by a pretty big margin is the materium affinity itself uh you can get that elsewhere there's a lot of stuff that gives materium affinity if you want it and the tome of winds just it's just doesn't do anything like it's probably better than the tome of mayhem but that's very very marginal all right so last but certainly not least we have the tome of artificing the Tome of Artificing is specialized in doing one thing, but it does that one thing pretty well, and the thing that it's trying to do is pretty good. So, you know, that's going to be points in its favor, unlike uh, Tome of Scrying, which does the thing that it wants to do really well, but it's very bad. Um, Tome of Artificing is good at winning sieges on the offense. It's really not good about doing it a whole lot else, although Artisan Arm Armaments does give you 30% crit chance and therefore is pretty good on the field, uh, although it doesn't apply to everything it applies to like you know most of the most important unit types although unfortunately for artificing not to your heroes a golem assistant is very very narrow in terms of its real use uh, this is mostly not great but the siege ability here is the real highlight you get siege magic and therefore siege breaker on all of your support and battle mage units this means you get plus one fortification damage there and you can build iron golems now you can't summon them uh if you want to summon iron golems which i think is generally better than you want to take tome of enchantment to summon a bunch of copper golems hope to god that the ai doesn't throw away all of them because it loves throwing copper golems away for no reason uh but you know if they evolve into iron golems then you're there but if you if you're risk averse or you just want to spend draft on iron golems for some reason then tome of artificing is here for you and iron golems are actually pretty solid units these things are also siege breakers and their status effect immune status effect immune to morale like the big problem with them obviously is that they only have two resistance and then minus four shock weakness and because tome of amplification is just like ludicrously powerful that means that these things are weak to the strongest thing in the game pretty much um outside of you know like big beefy heroes and, and the like but these are great siege units and as i mentioned with the other parts of the uh, the tome here this is just like great offensive uh pressure when it comes to siege stuff bolt repeaters are a lot better than onagers you even get a mine that generates a little bit of extra production although you know this whether or not you're going to build this kind of depends on whether or not you have access to great builders as, as one of your perks but i think overall what it's trying to do which is just help you be on the offense and pressure people when it comes to siege craft because like don't, don't don't do this don't do this don't build siege fortifications most of the time it's generally better to just kill people but but this this is pretty good at killing people and because killing people is generally pretty good and it does that thing pretty well i think this is a c tier tome i i could make an argument for it being maybe a little worse than a glade but i i think it's probably closer to here overall 
All right, so that is our tier two tome tier list here in Age of Wonders 4. We'll see how this shakes up with the, uh, the most recent patch. I have heard a lot of rumors about these two getting nerfed, which I think would be really deserved. They are ludicrously powerful in comparison to everything else. And unfortunately, that is why our, our A slot is, is empty here. It's not that these aren't good tomes. It's just, I don't want to mislead people. As much as I love Tome of Necromancy, it is definitely a lot worse than Tome of Revelry and, and Amplification, and that there's just kind of like no way around that. So we'll we'll see what happens moving forward. But uh, for now, that's uh, that's Walker here on We Play Games. Take care.